At the moment I'm out and about with Ben, I'm in the woods, um, very isolated place, very beautiful place. Let me show you around. Next to a very tall tree. It's very peaceful here. <coughs> this wood is on the um, outskirts of the city in which I live, surrounded by cornfields. That way, over there, is pure um, brick and mortar, but over the other way it's all fields, trees and woods. Um, in this video I'd like to share with you all a rule of interpretation that I use when studying particularly the Old Testament. You can use it when studying the New. Um, but it's better applied to Old Testament stories. I think I've mentioned it in the series of videos I've been posting looking at the book of Daniel. And I am, by the most high's grace, um, looking to finish that series. I've just not had time. Daniel 4 next. This is the rule. Um, the local and the literal become the worldwide and the spiritual. Certain events happened locally as described in the Old Testament in literal places to literal people. If we want to better understand the last days, we take those stories, the principles that we find in them, the um, lessons that we learn from them, and we apply them spiritually and on a world-wide scale. Imagine the last days as being kind of like a, a blank canvas or an incomplete jigsaw puzzle. And each of these Old Testament stories and certain stories in the New Testament are a piece of the puzzle. When you've got all of the stories, when you've learnt the lessons from all of these stories and you put them all together, you'll have a great understanding of the last days. This is something that Christ actually himself did. When speaking to the disciples, he would liken certain events, certain times in history to um, the days of Noah, um, Sodom and Gomorrah, and so on and so forth. Let me give you an example of, of um, that rule of interpretation being used. If we look at Genesis chapter 4, we have there described the story of, of Cain and Abel. Um, local and literal events are described and how do we apply them to the last days using the rule of interpretation. In Genesis 3 we have described the fall, the unfortunate fall of mankind. Um, Genesis 3 and verse 15 we read a promise a promise that Messiah would come. Now in order to keep that fresh in the minds of, of all people, a sacrificial system was instituted and it was required that a lamb without blemish would be slain and that lamb pointed toward Messiah. <coughs> Genesis chapter 4, you've got described, as already said, um, Cain and Abel. Abel was a shepherd. Cain was a tiller of the ground. Um, Abel was faithful in the fact that he offered the correct sacrifice. He showed righteousness, doing the right thing by faith, trusted in that which the Most High had said. Ben, come here! Ben's trying to um, chase after something. Apologies for the sudden shout. Um, Cain expressed what we call righteousness by works. He brought the works of his own hand, that which he had grown in the ground, and offered that to the Most High, knowing full well that that's not what was required. Um, he decided for himself what was right. He believed that his own work could save him, so he wasn't looking to Messiah. How do we look, or how do we apply these lessons to the last days? The attitudes of Cain and Abel represent the attitudes that will be prevalent, prevalent sorry, in the world just before Messiah returns. There will be those who are righteous by faith, trusting wholeheartedly in Messiah and his sacrifice. And there will be, unfortunately, those who believe that they are righteous because of their good works, very much like um, the Pharisees. Um, if you apply the same rule to, for example, 1 Kings chapter 18, um, you'll see in that chapter described a battle, probably best to call it a battle, between Elijah and the prophets of Baal and the prophets of the grove. Um, three and a half years have just passed of drought in Israel because of apostasy. Um, Elijah calls a meeting, he goes to King Ahab and calls a meeting, and all the people of Israel meet on Mount Carmel. Um, along with the king, Jezebel, <coughs> and all of the false prophets. And there's a challenge there. Um, both sides, Elijah and the prophets, the false prophets, are to make an altar and put a sacrifice on the altar 
and the test is fire coming down from heaven. Whoever could call fire down from heaven from their God, um, they would basically be proven right or the God that they serve would be proven to be true. Now, before the challenge was kind of laid out and, uh, and done, Elijah made an appeal, he said, How long halt ye, speaking to the Israelites, between two opinions? If Jehovah is God, worship him. If Baal, Baal, or um, basically Lucifer is God, then worship him. And the story goes that the prophets of Baal and of the groves, they prayed all day, eventually ended up cutting themselves and dancing around in a frenzy in order to call down um, the fire from heaven. It didn't come. Elijah uttered a still small prayer and fire came down proving to Israel that Jehovah is indeed the creator, the one in control of all things. Now how do we apply, um, or what happens, how do we learn about the last days when we apply the rule of interpretation mentioned in this video? Uh, Mount Carmel, the place, represents the world, and the two sides represent the right and wrong religious systems. The Israelites represent the people of the world looking on. Um, we need to have the attitude, the spirit of Elijah. We need to trust entirely in the Most High and what he can do. And sadly, in the last days, just before Messiah returns, we'll be far more leaning toward the wrong than the right. And there's a lot more that I could say on the story of Cain and Abel and on the story of um, Elijah in 1 Kings chapter 18, but I'll leave it at that. And if you've got any comments, please post away. Um, any questions, any corrections, any words of wisdom, any advice, please post it in the section below. I welcome video comments. Um, I hope that that which I've said has been beneficial to hopefully many. Um, please pray for me as I continue to pray for you.